This is the 16th of December of 2020, and um, we're studying Romans chapter 8. First, we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to bless everyone within the sound of my voice. I ask you to put every one of us in a hedge of protection and saturate us with the blood of Christ. I ask you to give us such a desire to know more of you that we can't stop looking into your word, Father. Fill us with all wisdom, knowledge, understanding, Father. Give us revelation, give us dreams, give us visions, Father. In Jesus' name, I ask you to bless my speech, my understanding, my eyesight, and that only your word goes out. I ask you to keep it quiet outside and cool and quiet inside. And let us, uh, let us be free from what we think we should be doing and let us understand your word and what you desire for us to do. In Jesus' name. Okay, Romans chapter 8. Uh, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law uh, might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, and to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in uh, the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwelt in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Um, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Hallelujah. Therefore, brethren, let us de uh, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to, the, to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself uh, beareth witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, uh, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God, for the creature was subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then we do, then do we... Um, with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, um, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
And he that searches the hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, um, he did predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the first born among many brethren, okay? Um, moreover, whom he did predestine, and he, them he also called, and whom he called, he also justified, and whom he justified, he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not... With him also freely give us all things, who shall lay anything um, to the charge of God's elect. Uh, it is God that justifieth, who is he that condemneth. It is Christ that died, yea, rather that he is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, uh, who shall separate us from the love of, of Christ, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril nor sword, as it is written, uh, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor debt, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thrill. What a thrill thrills my soul. Hallelujah. You know, when I was reading uh, Romans chapter 8, Verse 6 kept popping out at me. So I had to go and, and look at it again. So to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Whoa. So. Huh. So. Um, when we've accepted Christ Jesus. Our spirit becomes alive. And our spirit is quickened and made alive. And that's, I know that's a reason why um, Romans chapter 8, verse 6 kept coming out. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually uh, minded is life and peace. All right, so how do we know uh, that this is true? First, our fir our first off, our fruits are going to show it. And our fruits are, are the way we treat others, the way we treat our spouse, the way we conduct our business, how we treat our coworkers. You know, do we study the word? You know, how we speak, all those things are our fruits. And they will show the more you get into the word, the more you surrender your life to Christ, the more that will show. Because if you were drinking before and you were always hanging out in the pub, you're not going to be doing that same thing. You see what I mean? If you always curse, like a sailor, they say, <laughs> and if you always uh, had your nose in pornography and God gets a hold of you and changes you, you're going to renounce that, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So you won't be the same. That's our fruits that will come forward. That's how others know. That's how we know. That's one of the ways we know. So our Holy Spirit will speak through us is another way that we know. That's to persuade us. That's to make us know, to make us understand. Yes, persuade us. To show us, without a shadow of a doubt, that we have salvation that we are in Christ. It is our down payment for our inheritance, or in other words, eternal life Christ with our Creator and with our Savior Christ Jesus. And I, I just praise God for that. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So then we're told to judge. See, this, will, this is will, another reason why we're told to judge others. Okay, we don't judge their heart because obviously God is the only one that knows a man's heart. But we are to judge the fruits, the actions, the way they do things, the way they speak, and etc. Like I just said. Let's look at that. Look at uh, Matthew 7 and then verses 15 to 20. Matthew 7. 
15 to 20. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Matthew 7, 15 to 20. Hallelujah. Matthew 7, 15 to 20. Um, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Um, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that is that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, whereby their fruits ye shall know them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall know them by, by all these things I just mentioned. Hallelujah. So, you know, what's their fruit? We're going to talk about this again. It's praying in tongues. It's how you treat other one, other people, how you treat your children, you know, your spouse, your co-workers, like I just said. It's, uh, do we testify of the things that God has done for us? Hallelujah. Okay. We, do we study scriptures and things like this? So, you know, I wanted to reiterate the fruit part and to know the fruits is because people out there say, you judge not, least ye be judged, all this stuff. And they don't understand the hermeneutics of that time period and why it was said, who it was being said to. You know, like I said, the hermeneutics of that time period. And uh, so anyhow, when you look into it, we know that God is the only one that can, you know, read the heart, you know. He's the only one that can uh, read the heart. But we are to know them and watch them and look at them, what they're doing and how they're doing it. And you will know them by their fruits. Matthew 7, I just read that to you. So what it comes down to, there are two types of people. The non-believers, these are folks that are hostile to the things of God and refuse to surrender to God, you know, or the Holy Spirit. And therefore, they remain unchanged. They remain an enemy of, of God, right? Because the ones that don't accept him are his enemy. So... Believe, and there's another group, of, and they're called believers. Okay, these are folks that are receptive to the voice of God and that continue to be sanctified. We're not perfect right after we accept Christ, but we continue to grow in his word and to go into knowledge of him and who we are in him and our, our authority and our responsibility in him. And the word says to be in season and out of season, to study, to show yourself approved. It's in Timothy there. And it also tells us to... Um, to uh oh what is with the other thing so anyhow it's telling us to that that well we well actually we we go from glory to glory so the word tells us this and we're supposed to put line upon line and precept upon precept here a little there oil and literally we do because every time we get into the word which is our road map for life and also is our only uh weapon of spiritual warfare we've been given that uh, we, we do, we constantly add a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of experience, a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of experience. So we keep on building like that. And we, we always ask God to uh, forgive us of known and unknown sin. It shows our dark spots in us so we can repent because we don't want nothing in between us. If we would die, we don't want nothing to hinder our relationship while we're here on earth or when we pass on. That's obvious. So, um, so these believers absorb the things of the God. So the, the, thing, the believers absorb the things of God. It's obvious. Now, in, in turn, unbelievers absorb the things of the world. Okay, they are totally the opposite of the redeemed person. All right? So, uh, you can, in fact, you can see that. Look at these, uh, these groups, Black Lives Matters and the abortion clinics and people that just outright uh, don't believe, the atheists and agnostics and you know, uh, those kind of people, people that just won't accept you because you're different. Now, that's fine. As long as my God accepts me, that's what we care about. Hallelujah. So set your mind uh, on uh, means, okay, to set your mind on means to focus on something. That's why I always say, focus on Christ Jesus. Even though we don't see the results right away, our timing is not God's timing. The Word even tells us this. 
you know, one data him is a thousand years size. So we can see that our, uh, that's it. Peter said that. So we can see that um, our timing is not his timing. I mean, that's obvious. So because I don't see the uh, result right now in my left eye, I know I'm healed because why? I have a promise. I have a promise. His word says, yea and amen. Yes and amen. That's what his word says. Believe when you ask and you shall receive. Believe without doubt when you ask and you shall receive. See? His word says, seek ye first the kingdom, then all these things will be added to you. So what I'm saying is even though I don't see it, it's still, it, it, you know, it still won't uh, move me off the fact that the word of God is true. And I'm going to stand on his word in Jesus' name. Okay, so these people that uh, set their mind on the worldly things, like I said, once again, they're the unbelievers, they're the unredeemed. And other, but there's some, some people out there that say just because they believe, they're the head of the household, and they believe, or somebody in their house believes on the Christ and have accepted him, that means that in the rapture, when Christ calls his church out, his bride out, the, that believer's family will automatically go. And I mean, that goes against what scripture says, first off. You know, and then when that's when, then you can go look at what Jesus is saying about the wedding guests. He's going, he said, the one, the wedding, one of the persons that was there, friend, how did you get here? And then that person has nothing to say, was speechless. Because he, he wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit, so how did he get in? Holy Spirit is your wedding garment. So how did he get in? Well, he snuck in, you know, come in the back door, evidently. Don't know, but I'm just saying something to think about. The the wedding guests, as far as I can tell, are the believers that died in Christ before Holy Spirit was given out. That's before Christ came to the earth, before he was crucified and risen again, and obviously before Acts chapter 2, where Holy Spirit was given out to them that waited on him, them that believed on him. See, so this is my line of thinking, and I haven't found it anywhere in Scripture, so this is just what I'm thinking. If somebody's found it in Scripture, please tell me. Leave it in the notes in the comment. I'd appreciate it, and I would love to read it. But so far, you know, if someone says, well, because I believe you're going, no, it says, the word says every individual must make up their mind. They must make up their mind. They must believe for themselves. They must be filled with Holy Spirit. See? So if you keep on, well, God's trying to get you. In other words, the Holy Spirit's drawing you to the cross, drawing you to Christ. And you keep saying, not now, I'll wait, wait, wait. Well, that wait may never come because we're not promised another breath. Now think about that. So the unredeemed are, uh, <laughs> they're opposed to the things of God. They will argue with you about the smallest things and what, Satan is trying to do is use that person that's arguing and trying to get your eyes off Christ and off the word and start arguing with this person or this individual. Best thing to do is block them. Okay, so uh, we are only transported from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God by the Holy Spirit. Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verses 17 to 18. 2 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Oh, God is so good. I love you, Father. I love you. I can't wait to sit on your lap and kiss your cheek. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 18. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18. Therefore, if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by, Christ, by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. See, we have to make up our own uh, our, we, mind. We have to make up our own mind. Nobody can force you into believing in Christ. They're accepting him. So uh, we can see that the believers have totally different desires than those that don't believe. The ones that don't believe won't focus on Christ and don't want nothing to do with them most of the time. See, and make them, they make fun of the believers. That you know what? I would rather be made fun of 
right here and know that my salvation and my home is with my creator than to bow down to whatever man is telling me to do. Think about it. Okay, so if you're truly born again, you take on the mind of Christ. So you see through an eternal perspective. Isn't that awesome? So there is proof. Okay, this is proof in Romans 8, 6. Okay, that there's two different people, two different people groups, believers and non-believers, and there's their polar opposites, right? So they have a different mindset. Let's look at James chapter 4, verse 4. James 4. Verse 4, hallelujah. Please watch this video, Father, in the recording. James 4 and then verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. See, we're just telling you that. And I don't want to be an enemy of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Okay, what uh, what you give yourself to you, okay, are a slave of it. So whatever you go after, that you are a slave to. If you're if you go after money, 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 that's your God. That's your Savior. If you have to go to and uh, you have to go to every ball game, whatever that ball game is, soccer. or or basketball, or baseball, or football, whatever. And you you got to go to everyone. You can't miss it. Ah, you're, you're a total fan, right? And you sit there and scream and holler, and you're, ah, roll into it. But you go to church, or, or you don't go to church, but you could go to church. And you sit there like a lump on the log. Think about that. Think about it. That's your God. Let's look at Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Romans 6. Um... Verse 16, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants, to whom is servant ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Okay, and then we'll look at six, Romans 6 and then verse 21. Drop down to 21. What fruit had ye then in those things thereof? Ye are now ashamed, for the end of those things is death. And then we'll go drop down to... Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, so these three scriptures that I just gave you equal spiritual death. See, if you don't have Christ in your life, you're a walking dead person. Okay, that's all you are. You're a walking dead person. Your spirit is dead. Dead, what I mean? Dead to the things of God. Dead to the Holy Spirit. Right? Dead to the Word. No relationship with your Savior. No relationship with your Creator. You're walking dead. When you die, if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and His Spirit doesn't live in you, you're going to hell. And hell is a separation between you and your Creator. Separation from all that is good and holy and just and righteous. Separation between you and your creator. You'll be by yourself. Not with a group of people. Groups of people, people, people will be down in hell. But you'll be by yourself wishing that you had accepted Christ. And whatever was your God, whether it be sports, whether it be money, whether it be an individual, whether it be sex, whatever that God you made for yourself will be down there coaxing you along, ha, 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 and you'll want more of it. See, when you go to hell, all your senses are manifest millions of times. Millions of times. Don't let nobody fool you. Hallelujah. And then when you go to heaven, your senses are manifest. I don't know how many times, how many times. But the thing is, when you are in heaven, in eternity with your Creator, and with your Savior and Lord Christ Jesus... It's glory. It's bliss. It's some place that we were meant to be. But once again, we come to this earth and we have to make, we have to accept him. That we want to live eternally with our creator. That's why he sent his son. That's why God himself, Father God, sent his son Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Father and Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
So notice that in Romans 8 and verse 6 again, okay? The uh, peace in this verse is peace with God. You say, it's, uh, I've been told it's an objective, objective peace. So this peace that we're talking about, we're seeing right here, that uh, but for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That peace is peace with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Romans uh, 8 and verse 6, <laughs> we have now peace with God. I want peace. I want his joy. I want everything he has for me, whether it's tongues, whether it's a gift of healings, whether it's a gift of interpretation of tongues. I don't care what it is. I want every gift. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So we see in verse uh, 7 and 8 that the non-believers and death are the outcome. Okay, so for the unbelievers, which are the unredeemed, they, are, uh, they have an outcome of death. Of eternal separation. That's all there is to it. And verse 9 is the outcome of people that are his. So if you look at that, but ye are in the ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man not as he have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So what he's saying is you accept Christ and you you know the Holy Spirit draws you to Christ. Okay, so you have a measure of them, but you need to go further and you need to ask for his Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. That way no demon in hell, no person on earth can tell you that you are not saved. And the de that Holy Spirit will speak through you. You know, it's a down payment, our down payment for, for eternal, uh, eternal life with our creator. It's our down payment for uh, or our inheritance of eternal life. So you want to know behind a shadow of a doubt that you're, that you're saved. Hallelujah. And the only way that you can do that is ask for the gift of tongues. And what you do is you believe it. Because without faith, like, like Hebrews eleven six 6 says, it is impossible to pre please God. Even in Romans here we read it. It is impossible to please God without faith. So you ask for it. You start praising him. Your spirit gets excited. Holy Spirit gets excited. Holy Spirit starts talking to your creator. Hallelujah. And you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are saved. Your soul is saved. And you will go straight to the Father's presence once his body dies and you leave it. Because believe me, once again, I'm going to say it again, that no one has promised another breath. Whoo! Hallelujah. 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 So things to know that the unredeemed... Um, they hate God. Okay, they have a hatred toward God. They oppress the things of God. They are opposite of the same of things of God. Their whole life is hostile to things of God. In fact, even to the people that serve the God, you know, serve Christ. Okay, um, it's it's all about the mindset. It's all about your mindset. That's why we're told to renew our mind daily. And I want to look at this in Colossians chapter one, verse twenty-one. Hallelujah. 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 Whoo. Hallelujah. Colossians 1 and then verse 21. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now has he reconciled. And then you can uh, go ahead and look up that one because I don't believe I wrote it down. Um, renew your mind daily, Paul says. I don't think I wrote that one down. Um, and I don't remember where it's off uh, at offhand. Okay, so uh, these unredeemed people want to go their own way, and they refuse. And you know, these this is good uh, a good advice to know these people that are around you. All right. So the unredeemed people, they want to go their own way. They refuse God. They usually are arrogant, uh, self-oriented, prideful. They're humble. Or they're not humble. I'm sorry. They're not humble. They refuse to uh, ask God for forgiveness. And they refuse to give any kind of submission to their creator. So this is a good way. Like I said, once again, I'm going to say it again. Know them by their fruits. You know that they're not saved if they're this way. So I'm going to read uh, uh, Psalms chapter 1 real fast. Because I'm running out of time here. 
Father touched recording. Psalms, uh, Psalms chapter uh, one. We'll go read Psalms chapter one. Hmm. All right. Blessed is the man that um, walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor see, sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. See, here's what he's telling you. He's going, they are going to perish. And what you want to remember and, and remember about all of this is that the way that they, uh, the unredeemed act, don't be fooled when you got somebody saying, follow me, I know it all. I got the answer. God gave it to me. Uh -huh. You better get in the word and study for yourself, lady, by, by all of you. I say lady, but all of you. Okay. Uh, so uh, Romans 8.8, 8, we see here that so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. See this? So we have got to praise God. We've got to be in his presence. We cannot pray. We cannot uh, please God. We're going to go to, uh, to uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. We need to be in him. To please him, we have to have faith. Okay? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see? We have got to be in Christ and we've got to believe his word. His word. Remember, this is the word. Jesus was the word. Jesus our creator. Here? And the word tells us in John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. See, now, go back and read that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we must realize that true believers are not sitting on the fence post. Okay, so like, like I said, Romans chapter 8, verse 9, the Holy Spirit lives in every born-again believer. All right, let's go check out uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. First. Corinthians 6, hallelujah, uh, 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So in conclusion, we got an awesome God. We have we serve an awesome God. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Jesus, Holy Spirit. Praise you. All right. He forgives our sins. It's just like, um, you know, so I'm not going to go there for, uh, for time's sake. But I love the verse, Psalms 103, 12. He foes our sins as far as the east is from the west. And, you know, the east and west never meet, no matter what way you go. Hallelujah. Thank you for that knowledge, Holy Spirit. Okay, how, um, however, every one of us needs to examine ourselves. See, let's look at that. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 2 Corinthians. Thirteen, verse 5. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobates. The main point of that verse is examine yourself whether you are in Christ. Hallelujah. And in turn, just like I said, know them by their fruits. You got one up here. All right. So have you ever thought about this? That, that salvation is a divine occurrence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So we must 
renounce the old ways in life, we must do what Elisha did in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16 to 21. 1 Kings chapter 19. I want to read the account of what Elisha did. Okay, 16 to 21. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel, Jehu. And Elisha, the son of uh, Shipath of Annabalo, Annabalo, not pronouncing that right, sorry. Um, thou shalt anoint to be prophet in thy room.